Mr. Mike Freer. Yeah. 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 Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, if I may turn the comments on to speaking briefly about my predecessor, the local member of Parliament for Finchley and Fry and Barnet. Many people have talked about her role on the global stage or the national stage. I wish to talk about the woman who represented Finchley for 33 years. The woman my party members remember never ever as Maggie, but simply as Mrs T or more fondly as our Margaret. From the outset, Finchley Conservatives knew they had a winner. One of my stalwarts, Derek Phillips, recounts how, as a young Conservative, he went into that selection meeting saying, I'm not voting for a woman. He came out having voted for that woman. He changed his mind in short order when she was clearly head and shoulders above the men. And from that day on, Mr Speaker, she remained head and shoulders above the men around her. Now, much is said about Mrs Thatcher's background. She's described often disparagingly as the grocer's daughter and housewife, who knew the value of thrift and of living in one's means, as if there was something wrong with that. For me, Mrs Thatcher illustrates clearly and sharply what shapes our views as members of Parliament. Whether it's ideology, background or our casework, and it's probably a blend of all three. Finchley and Fry and Barnet was and is a suburban constituency. Mrs Thatcher would have seen firsthand how government policies affected the lives of local families. Families who had worked hard to buy their home, or those families who struggled to men's make ends meet, and including the many pensioners in the constituency. When commentators describe her as driven by ideology, they fail to understand the woman. Mm. They fail yeah, to understand yeah. that the constituency was her touchstone. Now, Mr Speaker, as might be expected, Finchley has a wealth of memorabilia. And uh, I came across one election address dating back to 74. But I also searched for a photograph of one young Stu Finchley student called John Burko, who I'm told <laughs> approached Mrs Thatcher at one of the hustings and was firmly told to go and join the Young Conservatives. <laughs> You'll be pleased to know, Mr Speaker, no uh, photographic evidence exists. I have searched. <laughs> but, Mr Speaker, I did find this election address, if you'll forgive me for using a prop, dating back to 1974. And if I may highlight a few excerpts from it. She said, because this was her local election address of 1974, 40 years ago, as a nation, we must stop living on borrowed money. We must gradually reduce the debt over a period of three or four years. That sounds familiar. We must keep public spending within the capacity and willingness of our citizens to foot the bills. And it goes on, Mr Speaker, to talk about helping first-time buyers with their deposits, <laughs> of helping council tenants to buy their homes, yeah, and of yeah. course of, eating, of, of easing the rates burden. And that was 40 years ago, and some would say nothing has changed. <laughs> but Mr Speaker, the day-to-day -day issues that faced her as a local constituency MP, in my view, influenced her policies. Finchley was where she came to recharge her batteries. She knew that when she came to Finchley, she would leave the advisers behind, and she would hear the unvarnished truth as seen by her constituents, and equally importantly, by her supporters and her activists. One of her agents tells a story that within minutes on Mrs Thatcher returning to Downing Street, the number 10 machine would be on the phone demanding, politely, to know what she had been told in Finchley, because she had returned to Downing Street full of vigour, demanding to know what was going on with this and what was going on with that. Mr Speaker, Finchley brought home to her what needed to be done. Now, there is one incident that perhaps explains the, her drive to abolish the rates and introduce the community charge. 
And this is an example of how I believe her constituency work shaped her policies. Now, the rights and wrongs of the committee charge are not for today. But the casework Mrs Thatcher came across drove home the inequality of a household with several wage earners paying the same as a pensioner. She saw firsthand the struggle many on low and fixed incomes had with the rates. And one experience I will relate. I'm told one elderly resident came to see her in a state of distress. The resident had paid her rates in cash, in an envelope, to the town hall. The cash went astray. Now, Mrs Thatcher knew the hardship having to face uh, find the rates once had caused, let alone having to find it a second time to make up the cash that had gone astray. And it's not commonly known, but Mrs Thatcher quietly sent a cheque and paid the rates for that resident. She was far from the heartless caricature portrayed in the media and by her opponents. She took enormous interest in her constituents and her ability to remember their names and their concerns often months after first meeting them was truly astounding. In the early 1990s, when I was a local councillor in Finchley, Mrs Thatcher came to a summer fete, a summer fete held every year on a small council estate. She arrived bang on time because she was a stickler for punctuality. She swept in, in the Jaguar. Out she came, as immaculate as ever, and ignored, of course, the local dignitaries like humble councillors and went straight across to the organiser of the fete. I'll call her Mrs Smith and went straight up and said, now dear, how did your daughter get on with her GCSEs? She sat them last year, didn't she? Wasn't she sitting seven? And I was completely bowled over by this. And I spoke to her agent and I said, do you make copious notes while no one's looking so that you can brief her before she arrives? And I was very firmly told, no, she simply remembers. And that was the measure of the woman as a constituency MP. She had an amazing knack of being able to put anyone at ease usually because she knew what was important to them, had to be important to her. The dripping tap the council wouldn't repair was the most important thing to that constituent, and so it became the most important thing to Mrs T. Mm -hmm. Now, there are countless examples of her warmth and her compassion. The devotion of those who worked with her and stayed with her after she was no longer the PM is testament to that. Many of her close protection officers chose to stay with her, rather than move up the ranks. One of whom recently told me that of a Christmas time at Chequers, he came back to the police mess room to find that Mrs Thatcher had been in, she had tidied it up, she had decorated it with Christmas decorations, she had cleaned out the hearth and laid a fire, and she had left a flask of coffee on the table for her police officers. That is the woman few people saw. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, Mr Deputy Speaker, it was said by my noble friend, Baron Baker of Dorking, that we shall not see the like of her again. Well, we probably will see a woman party leader. We probably will see a woman prime minister again. But will we see the intellect, the drive, the passion and the core beliefs to shape events, not to bend to them? Will we see the whole package? I don't think so. Mr Deputy Speaker, Mr Speaker, our Margaret, as my members remember her, was an outstanding constituency MP. Finchley is proud to have selected her and we are grateful to the Thatcher family for them lending her to us. Oh. Yeah.